Almost 3,000 years ago, in the southern Maltese harbour, there was a rich and ancient town. A rich culture flourished under the Phoenician legacy. The Phoenicians were men of valour and great spirit, and their everyday life prevailed in the area known as Tassilch Hill. Time ago their ships sailed from Phoenicia in the eastern Mediterranean and finally passed through this inner harbour to barter their wares and exchange their rich material tokens. Diodorus confirms that the Phoenicians planted their culture in Malta as they extended their trade to the Western Ocean. Malta, or Malet, became their safe retreat. From Tyre, their ships probably skirted all the Mediterranean, from Cyprus, Crete, southern eastern Sicily, Motvia, and far beyond. And their presence here is evident in other places. In the rock cut tomb found at Ain Ayet, in the Rabat area, or the Imdina promontory. At the Sandar, on Imtarfa Hill. Ar Barka, in Busquet. And Ain Lklip, Marsa. Today, what remains of the Phoenician town is a little fishing village, Marsa Shlok. With some 3,000 inhabitants, it sits quietly and calmly. Fishing boats are everywhere, in the sea and cradled on the quay which flanks this old village along its full length. Everyday life in Marsa Shlok is a simple life and hard work is the order of the day, especially for the older generation, particularly for the few fishermen that still sustain their living with seasonal fishing expeditions for various types of fishes. Mackerel or tumbrel, garfish, imsel, small specimens of tani, ton, Mediterranean barracuda, litz, and the most popular of them is the dolphin fish, or dorado. Traditional fishing methods, like cannizzati, which consists of one or two large masses of cork slabs or jablo, anchored by slabs of limestone, is still a valid and successful fishing method, along with other fishing methods like the lampara fishing. Fishermen today are politically voiceless, as imported fish stocks, aggressive fishing operators, official directives and fish farms have made their work harder and unsustainable. Their situation has become even more critical than the perils of the sea, resulting in the dying out of coastal fishing communities in the European Union.
The real saga in these fishing expeditions is recounted in the experience of Paolo Bonnici. The life experience of this fisherman is almost identical to Hemingway's compassionate description of Santiago's life at sea. Paolo strove all his life to prove himself through his fishing expeditions in the modern world. In all his life, he acted like the ingenious Ulysses, who traveled far and wide to sack the seas. Moreover, Paolo, like Ulysses and Hemingway's old man, suffered greatly at sea while trying to save his own life and bring his own boat safely home. The fishing boat for Paulo is not just a common boat. His boat is his natural companion. For his boat is part of his own existence. His devotion and relation to his boat is just like that with another human being. 
in solitude at sea, his boat and its engine become his greatest consolation, empowering to survive through all other afflictions and trials. In solitude at sea, his boat and its engine become his greatest consolation, empowering him to survive through all other afflictions and trials. A fisherman cannot attain to the ticket of wisdom unless he experiences his long journey of peril. His belief in God and his religion possesses this nature, the knowledge attained through fear and death. He knows very well all fishing techniques and methods like trolling, artificial lures and many others, and his most outstanding catch was certainly that of sharks. For this reason, his fishing experience goes beyond the Lampuki season or the Dorato or the dolphin fish, as it involves quite an elaborate method to domesticate such a potential predator. Tetta Vella, 